Greetings friends. Uh, this week in my game room I want to talk to you about a game that I bought for several reasons in two different forms. There are two copies of the game Bazaar in my collection. This one from Discovery Toys and this one which is the 3M uh, original version. Now uh, the Discovery Toys version I picked up because we had a local dealer in Discovery Toys. It was something that I could play with my kids. 3M version I purchased because it uh, went along with the collection. You can see a lot of the 3M bookshelf games behind me here. That's about half of my collection. The game was originally devised by the famous Sid Saxon, uh, one of the most prolific game designers in history, I think. He uh, did a lot of the classics, and a lot of his games ended up in the 3M Bookshelf series as well. Altogether, he had over a hundred games published over the years. And Bizarre was first published by the 3M Company in 1967. There are several versions from the 3M Bookshelf series uh, that are slightly different. Uh, different artwork, different grade of components, but uh, overall it's the same game. The artwork in the original was very geometric and very abstract and uh, in fact Sid Saxon himself said this is a math game. Uh, but very soon it took on this theme of trading in a marketplace and that theme pretty well stuck with the game all the way through its life. Now here are the basic rules to the game uh, then I'll come back later and talk a little bit more about its uh, history and other games that it influenced. The game begins by randomly drawing two of the large barter cards and placing them face up in easy view of all the players. Then the four star cards are placed face up near the barter cards. And on top of each of these, five merchandise cards are randomly dealt face up. The remaining merchandise cards are set aside to be used later in the game. Some scorekeeping method is used as the game goes on. Of course, I recommend the New Venture Games scoreboards for this purpose. And finally, each player rolls the color die and takes the indicated gem from the stock. If a star comes up, the player may take any color gem. Then the game begins. On each player's turn, they may either toss the color die and take a gem, or they may make a trade based on the equations on the barter cards. These gems are traded with the bank the stock of gems in the box, and the trade can be on either side of the equal sign, left to right or right to left. The objective here is to collect the right combination of gems to purchase a merchandise card from the four stacks on the table. And here's the interesting twist to this process. Your score depends on how many gems you have left after the purchase. For example, if you have three or more gems left, you get one point. If you have two gems left, you get two points. If you have one gem left, you get three points. And if you have zero gems left, you get five points. Some merchandise cards have stars in the center. The stars add to your score. So for example, if you have three or more gems left, but the card you purchase has a star, you actually get two points, and so on. Rather than go into detail about the rest of this scoring chart, here it is. And of course it's reproduced in the rules to the game. Remember those star cards that are at the bottom of each stack? When one of these stars is revealed, it's as if all merchandise cards have a star now, and scores go up accordingly. Also, when that one star is revealed, the 25 merchandise cards that were set aside earlier come into play. They get dealt out into two stacks of eight and one stack of nine, then placed under the remaining merchandise cards face up. This is a carefully calculated feature based on how the game is balanced between acquisition and spending. It's all very scientific. One more note. At the end of a turn, players may not have more than 10 gems. During a turn, it's okay to have more than 10 as long as a merchandise card is purchased during that turn. The win condition is based on points according to this table. 50 points wins when there are two players. 
40 points wins when there are three players, 30 points wins for four players, 25 points wins for five players, and 20 points wins for six players. The game design was picked up by Schmidtspiel in Germany, and there they called the game Bierbursch, which in English means beer exchange. And so instead of simply having abstract gems being traded, they were actually trading brands of beer. I guess that fit the culture in Germany pretty well. It caught on and uh, became very popular under that title. And one of the reasons that it happened at all was that Sid Saxon had a relationship with Parker Brothers, who had a relationship with Schmidtspiel in Germany. And uh, so that licensing connection was made uh, through Parker Brothers. But by the 1980s, the uh, German publishers got on board with the theme of uh, North African trading, and uh, they changed their packaging and their artwork to go along with the same bizarre theme uh, as the Americans and the British. In the 1980s, uh, an adaptation of the game called Bizarre 2 was published in Germany, and uh, at that time, Rio Grande Games was importing a lot of European games to America. And so when they got a hold of the game, uh, they called it Samarkand. And they added quite a few other mechanisms to the game by that time so that it was built upon the same trading principle, but uh, was definitely a different game. And then it was around 1990 that Discovery Toys added it to their catalog. Discovery Toys itself was founded in 1978 as a multi-level marketing company. Um, they had who they called sales consultants around the country. By 1982, they have over 2,500 people selling their Discovery Toys line. They are still around today and uh, thriving. And as always, they tend to focus on educational toys. And Bazaar is obviously an educational toy. In the early 21st century, uh, the license was picked up by Griffin Games, and they later became uh, Eagle Griffin Games, and still published Bazaar, uh, still pretty much has the same theme. Changed the graphics, of course, and the packaging somewhat uh, as the years go by. Now, if you enjoy that aspect of the game that's in exchange rates and working out an engine that uh, allows you to gain wealth uh, throughout the game, Again, another game that you might want to look at is uh, Century Spice Road. Spice Road allows you to deliberately influence the exchange rates of certain resources. It's kind of an interesting twist on it. I really enjoy uh, Century Spice Road. So, And so whether you have the 3M version or the Discovery Toys version or some other version in some other language, uh, I think you really enjoy playing Bazaar. Uh, I would like to uh, hear what you think of the game. Be sure to share your comments with me here, and uh, we'll talk about the game of Bazaar. If you haven't already, be sure that you subscribe to the channel and ring that uh, bell there so you'll get notified when a new episode is aired. We look forward to sharing more with you about games, and whether you play Bazaar or some other game, I want to encourage you to be sure and play every night.